So finding a productivity tool can be really difficult and I wanted to share and distill all of my advice from reviewing productivity apps for over 10 years and also sticking with productivity apps for a while and uh, give you the my three part process which is called RTO. This is going to be some guide and advice to finding the best productivity apps and sticking with them. Hello everyone, my name is Francesco and as I said before, I've had over 10 years experience reviewing productivity apps. It's really something I love doing and something I love differentiating between the two. So if you're interested, jump over to Tool Finder and you can discover all the productivity tools that we review here on Keep Productive. So very simply, there's a three part process to this, RT. And the first R is research. Now, research is really fundamental when finding a productivity tool. And a lot of people miss this part of the process because of something called shiny tool syndrome. They jump between applications that arrive on Product Hunt or maybe even someone recommends them at work. And they don't do the research to whether it matches the needs that you have for a productivity tool. So one of my best recommendations is to sit down and to write down what needs you have. It's really important to establish your needs before you jump into the tool before doing it the other way around because naturally tool sites are amazing at being great marketers they want to try and solve a problem that you might not know that you have and try to almost make the needs for you so establish your needs first and this could be in a specific industry that you're in or a specific type of role you're in and then you need to look at your situation your situation could be what you're doing right now the stage of life you're in or maybe even just I guess where you are in terms of what you need at this current moment. And for some people, that could be I need a to-do list app, I need a note-taking app, but I'm going to be at college for the next three years. You need to look in a three to five year window. Is your life goal style going to dramatically change in that time period? For example, are you planning to have children? Do you need something that's a little bit more robust in terms of being more mobile friendly with the kids? Or maybe do you need something that's a little bit less intense because you're going to retire in three years? It's really important to be able to establish your situation and how it's going to change so that you are adapting and you're not reacting in six months when you change job roles and you know that you're changing job roles. So that's very important to have when doing the research. And finally, when looking at the research, you need to use the best resources out there. I'm not going to say it's Tool Finder, but there are loads of different sites, including Tool Finder, that can help you to establish other aspects of a productivity tool that might be important. For example, the values of the company that you're choosing from, and that can be what what they believe in and how they want to operate their company. That might be a very important factor to you, but also how long they've been in business because you don't necessarily want to go with every new tool that pops up. You might want something that has a little bit more of an established footing in the productivity space. And finally, um, looking at how they operate their company is also very important. A good example of this that I always use is Todoist have uh, been built by the company Doist and they establish really good asynchronous remote values, which you can see across the company and that's always good to see as somebody that you uh, respect and value of course now next part of the stage is once you've chosen one option to move forward with commit to a 90-day trial i always recommend a 90-day trial because 90 days is a good period of time to learn what's wrong with the tool but the difference with this is you have to commit to those 90 days the reason being so that you can be very rigid and important when establishing what the issues are with that application and it also sort of cuts the bridges when it comes to jumping between applications and that also establishes a better way of you researching the tool first so that's why i typically recommend doing a 90-day trial during this time period keeping a journal of all of the things you like and don't like about the application in case you need to come to after those 90 days finding another application and going back to the r of the rto process and finally this is a stage that a lot of people don't do and it's o optimize very simply what people need to do is a establish once they found the tool they love match it to the industry they're in so see how other people are using it in your industry learn how to utilize all of the features as part of the plan you're paying for or not paying for and to really master it and fine tune and get the most out of that and you can do that through guides learning youtube whatever it be but the really important thing is to optimize it because you want to be with that productivity tool for three to five years ideally and one of the biggest things that I see when I get people 
finder tool is they don't optimize it. So they're not gonna stay there long enough because they sort of don't know what's inside of the application and the true powers behind it. So your investment to learn it and optimize it will pay off because you'll keep it for longer and you'll be, all, be happier for longer. The best analogy that I have is productivity is very much like moving house. When you move house, it's very stressful and you don't want to move house every six months. You want to move house maybe even every three years or longer, ideally, stay with the house. So making sure you establish a good setting will help you to feel more comfortable in that house that you're building. And of course, it's really important to look at the foundations that you have for the house. So the productivity systems and frameworks are used underneath the tool before you jump in. So they're all my recommendations when it comes to finding a best productivity tool. And I really hope it helps you to find the best one and really to improve the search process. So whenever you're doing and finding productivities, think of RTO, Research Trial Optimize, and it will help you to establish a better setting when finding the perfect productivity tools. And if you're in the hunt for that, we'd love to help you find the best productivity tools. So do jump over to Tool Finder, which has a array of resources that you will help you to really narrow down the choices that you've got. And I look forward to helping you find that. And of course, if you are looking for productivity videos, I myself have over 10 years of experience at helping to find people for activity tools. So do search for our videos that can, I'm sure, be a real help. So thank you very much. And I look forward to helping you to find the best productivity tools. Thank you very much. And uh, cheerio. Good luck in your hunt. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, you can check out another video here on YouTube diving into productivity tools. But if you did want to, you can jump over to Tool Finder to discover any productivity tools which will be linked here as well. We have a resource of over 250 productivity tools and growing. And naturally, there are reviews, insights and much more. So do check it out below. But thank you very much for watching this video.